Hello and welcome to my channel Joanne Seal where I show you how to make and create beautiful things and today we will be continuing making this painting of a sweet girl and I will be teaching you how to draw her. Hello <laughs> I'm back again so this is now dry and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on drawing the figure and I might put a little bird here I think yeah down here or maybe up there I'm not sure so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a pencil I'm just gonna get any pencil um, I'll try to get a dark one a fairly dark one a soft one is this HB was oh, this is quite dark so the softer the, the the softer the lead on the pencil, the darker it is. So, and also, um, so in order to draw the face, the head, I'm going to use a coffee cup. I don't usually, but just for the sake of teaching you, um, I'm going to use a coffee cup. So, just get a coffee cup. I'm using A3 paper, which is two sheets of A4. That's the size. And so, this size coffee cup fits quite well. The head's going to be quite big compared to the body because it's going to be a whimsical girl and that's how we draw whimsical girls. <laughs> so um, yeah, so if you have one of these broad coffee cups that's fine. If you've got anything else that's around this size and that's circular you can use that instead. So I normally put the head sort of here and the head isn't going to be round but we're going to use this as a guide. So if you draw that circle, just to get the shape, that's nice. And now if you bring the line down a bit so that it's more of a tear, teardrop shape. Or you know those, um, you know on maps, on Google, or all those maps, they have that shape, the, the marker on the map, that kind of shape. A bit rounder maybe okay so that's good so we can get rid of that line now so it doesn't look confusing okay so that jaw that chin is a bit too uh it's a bit it's a bit pointed isn't it i don't mind them pointed so that's a bit too pointed though so i'm just gonna I'm just gonna flatten that i'm gonna get rid of this line if possible sometimes if you've used paint acrylic paint over things then you can't you can't rub them out okay so that's a bit better okay so I normally give my girls the same hairstyle but I might try a new one today just for the sake of this um actually no <laughs> just in case I mess it up I normally give them this hairstyle oops I don't make it too big I tend to make them too big I think that's too big already, but I'll, I'll keep it like that. So it's like a sort of pulled back, uh, sort of, it's like an afro with, actually I want it a bit slanted. No, I'll keep it straight for now so it's a bit easier. So um, it's like an afro with a band, and then I put a band around it here. I can bring that in a bit here into the forehead space. So the band starts off, it kind of goes to a point here because it's curving around and then it goes up. You can give your girls any hairstyle you want. It can even be a boy, it doesn't have to be a girl. I just I rarely draw. I, well, I make sweet girls, so they're all girls. <laughs> but you can make a sweet boy. Or whatever gender, genderless as well. So the head is super big, as you can see, but that sort of adds to the whimsical feel. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring her jawline. In. The whimsical faces, they have quite small jaws, the jaw isn't wide, so it will come in 
quite sharply and that makes it look sweeter in a way. So if the jaw came out to here, it would look like a heavy jaw and it wouldn't be as whimsical and sweet. Although I'm sure we all have jaws that come down like that. It's just, this is like a, a sort of fanciful, it's not realistic at all. Okay, so that's the head shape, that looks really cute. And now I'm just gonna give her a bit of a neck, not a, not a large neck, smallish neck. Actually, it could be smaller than that even. Just so it looks whimsical, it doesn't look realistic. Small neck. And for the body, you can just do, you can just make the body any shape you want. So, um, let's think of a nice dress shape, first of all. So let's do some shoulders. The shoulders can come out to here so that the body is quite small compared to the head. And then <clears throat> I normally do the arms so that they're behind the girl just so I don't have to draw the hands. <laughs> and then the dress. The dress. Hmm, let's have a think. Oh, I like that shape. I like the fact that I might do two lines and then the dress can go come out like this. And go like this and then here as well so it's not too curvy because this is a, a young girl so she doesn't have curves but the dress I'm going to give it something that goes in like that just because I drew it and I liked it so. and then normally I, let's do a neckline so the neckline can come down here it can that's quite a low sorry not a neckline that's the arm line come in here in this way too and I like to put I'm gonna put a little heart here as a pocket or just as a heart and then oops that was not right that shoulder so maybe this arm needs to come out a bit more this side And then this will have to go like that. It's not perfect. So we'll go like that. So just draw any dress you like. It doesn't have to look doesn't have to look perfect. Let's do a neckline. I think then I'm going to make the neckline part of the heart. So it goes down like that. It comes out. So that's a little dress. You probably can't see that very well, but that's how it looks. And the bottom I've made sort of wavy. And then for the legs, I just do that. We don't see the bottom of their legs. It looks quite short. Do her legs like that. Maybe. So it's square. these bits to come in like that so it's a bit of a design feature and I might put a little belt around here with a little buckle here so that's cute and bring that down a bit more we can keep changing this as we go it doesn't have to be fixed like that. Like. And bring her arms out a bit more, her shoulders out a bit more. Maybe I'll bring her arms in a bit because they looked a bit a bit too wide. Okay. 
So you can't see it very well, but I'm going to fill this in with white paint for gesso. Okay, so what else should we put in? Uh, should we put a little bird here? Let's put a little bird. So the bird can be sitting on something. So let's put a little bird perch here. And we'll give it a little, a little trestle with some legs that go out like this. Because that's quite cute. And then the bird. So um, the birds I make are just a circle. <laughs> Kind of big chunky birds a circle like that with a little head here and a tail that goes up like that or it, it kind of fans out like that and then a big a wing that goes it's just a u can you see that the wing is just a u and then Just get the head sitting right, and then the beak can just be like that. And I call these little birds Freddy, Freddy birds. <laughs> I don't know why. Freddy with an eye. I don't know why. <laughs> That's Freddy, and the legs are just three little feet. That's all I do, and it looks cute. So that's the bird. There you are, little bird, Freddy. Let's make the back of her head a bit rounder. Okay, so Freddy's done. I haven't drawn Freddy for a while now, actually. <laughs> and Freddy's specific colours as well, so we'll do that later. Let's put that on a little now. And so what can we have above Freddy because there's some space here which I think I want to fill with something and I'll fill it with um let's just have that we'll do some butterflies and things so I'm not very good at drawing butterflies but there's one we'll do that one a bit better later Draw a rough butterfly. And another one here. A couple of butterflies there. You can put a butterfly here as well. If you're better at drawing that butterfly, whimsical butterflies, then do show me on if you want to post it on the group page. Sometimes I put butterflies in that I've cut with on my with owl paper, so they're paper cut. But I think today, especially because not many people will have a paper cutting machine, we'll do them like this. So let's have some something here, and we can have some flowers. Let's do some tulips, or mm, yeah, some tulips. So. Tulips are like kind of like this. Another tulip here. Tulips are really simple. And these are whimsical tulips, so they can look however we want them to look. And down here we'll have some sort of traditional looking flowers as well. Well, I say traditional, I mean it's, you know, the sort of flowers you drew as a child, I guess. Which are like that. So it's all very rough. It's not, nothing when you do whimsy is sort of perfect. It's just, it's kind of fanciful. Okay, so now that's done. What we need to do is block all of this in with um, white paint 
and but when we paint it we don't go over the lines that we've drawn so just so we keep the shapes that we've made so just one second so I'm actually going to use gesso as my white because it's incredibly opaque a lot of um, mixed media creators use gesso instead of paint because of its thickness and the fact that you can you can draw over it you can do it put a lot of things on top of it it's like a primer that's it's that's what people normally use it for <laughs> but we as mixed media creators we use it in our in our sort of whimsical paintings so we can add lots of layers of things on top of each other and block things out so or if you don't have gesso you can just use white paint it's just as good well, it's not. <laughs> That's why we use gesso, but um, it will do. So I'm going to use a long brush. This is like a, this is really old. I think this is one of the first brushes I bought. Anyway, this is a bristle brush and it's got a reasonably small tip. It's not a fine tip by any means, but. And I'm just going to dip it into the... Ooh, if I can open it. Okay. This used to, oh, <coughs> this used to be my favourite gesso and they've changed the recipe. And it's really not as nice anymore. It, and it smells. I hope there's nothing too toxic in it. Okay, so I'm going to start painting over the hair. The hair's going to be black anyway, but... It's nice to just block it out anyway. And it doesn't matter if your shape isn't 100% correct or as you'd like it at this stage because we can always change things afterwards. So say you put a little bit out here and it, you didn't like it, um, afterwards we can um, blend that in with the background colour and do various things to cover that up. So don't worry if you're not 100% happy with your painting or if you need to change your painting um, later on. So I'm just gonna block this in as well, keeping the line that we made so that I know that this is going to be a different color. I might fast forward a bit. This needs to come out a bit more, I think. That's better. See how thick it is, it's lovely. <laughs> Gesso's lovely. Unfortunately this isn't. I used to like this gesso because it was really crunchy. It had sort of some kind of texture in it that was crunchy. I used to, oh. And you'll hear loads, lots and lots of uh, mixed media paint people talking about how much they love their gesso because of its various, for various reasons, the texture, the opacity, all sorts of things. There's something about gesso that, I don't know, everyone seems to love just for various reasons. It's really rich and creamy as well, buttery. Yeah, and it's, it's just nice, it's nice. Okay, so I'm gonna, I think I'll need to swap to a smaller brush now because I'm doing more detailed work. So I will use, I've got so many brushes. Uh, what should I use? Mm -mm. And none of them are in particularly good condition. I need to go on a brush, I need to go on a brush hunt, <laughs> a shop for new brushes. Okay, this one isn't much smaller and it's not a very good brush. It doesn't look great. So I always get the same brushes because I like them. I I'll, I should try some different ones just in case they might be better, but for now I just use these. I don't know what they're called. But um, if you buy, if you need to buy brushes don't buy the cheapest brush because they don't, they're not very good basically. Go for the next sort of level up, semi-professional brush. I think professional brushes might be very, very expensive. And also when you're doing mixed media work, there's a lot of, brushes get used a lot 
sort of in various different ways which makes them it sort of breaks the brush so <laughs> you don't want to buy any brushes that are too expensive but the cheapest ones just won't do a very good job and they won't last very long either I'll show you I've got some cheap ones here which I bought this is a cheap one I'll try to use it now and it will just <laughs> It's ridiculous. I can't even really paint with it because it, the bristles aren't very good. I'll, I'll go ahead and use it though, just in case, you know, not everyone has a budget for expensive or semi-expensive brushes. So this, I think this is too soft. I think it's supposed to be an acrylic brush for acrylic paint. And it should be quite firm ish but this is just can you see how it splays out when you press down it's sort of no, that's not very good but since we're just putting on gesso i'll try to use it i actually like the painting at this stage i always like the painting when it's just white and with no colour and just the background colour. I, I think it's because I like the form, the shapes and also because most a lot of the time my paintings are blue, have a lot of blue in it and in them and um, I love blue and white together. It's a really interesting blend of colour. It looks a bit odd on this side, I think it comes out too far, so bring it in a bit. It's better. I wonder, can you see this? I'll zoom in a bit. went over that line by mistake. Never mind. I can draw it back in. I'm so hungry. What's the time? It's quite late, that's why. I did lots of admin today, mainly admin. takes a lot of time and also because it's not so interesting it takes longer it takes me longer okay so that's a dress done it's a bit of a strange shaped dress I think but it will do we can change it later on do her legs. So I think maybe this needs to change the bottom bit. And that's all. Hello again, and I just want to show you what I've done. I've changed her body slightly, her dress. I, I'll just put a side by side. I'll put this one here and I'll put the other one there. So you can see what I've done because it just didn't look right. She's not in proportion anyway, but the dress and her arms didn't look right. So I changed them slightly and her legs. I didn't like the way they looked. So now, 
going to start blocking in some colour. I'm not going to do any drawing just yet. I thought I'd put some, lay some colour down and I'll put the features in the face. And I'd like to put a little bit of extra colour around the edges as well. I'd love to use this colour, but I want to use um, water-soluble water, water crayons and I don't think I've got this colour. I might have something a bit that's similar, but I'll check. But I don't think it's the same. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start doing her face and I'm going to do a sort of darkish toned skin tone. So I'm going to use... Just one second. I'm going to mainly use this. And I'm going to mix that with, use a bit of mixing white as well to get some lighter shades. And I'm going to use this for the darker tones around the outside. I'm only going to be shading light to dark around the outside. That's the first thing I'll do. And then after that, I'll then I'll draw in her features, but I'll probably block in colour everywhere so that it's all drying at the same time. Ooh. Just got some on my hand. Okay, let me find a brush. I bought some new brushes today, but only these thin ones, fine tipped ones, because all of my fine tips are now broken because I left them in the water. So I think I'll use this brush, which is one of the cheap brushes. Just to see how it works, just so I can show you how, how good or bad it is. Okay, so I've got my, so I'm gonna be blending light to dark and I'll have to put several layers on because as you can see, this, this paint's quite, it's not, very opaque and I only use really tiny amounts of paint and thin layers so uh, it takes forever <laughs> I put loads of layers down I really enjoy painting like that as well I love uh, thin many thin layers of paint so I'm probably going to change her face slightly because it's a bit weird along that side I'll, I'll just I'll just do it like this for now. So already this brush is really annoying me <laughs> because it's not. It's, I'm going to use a different brush. So my other brushes are all a little bit broken because I leave them in the water, which is really bad. But immediately you can see that this brush, which is just a little bit more expensive, maybe a couple of a few pounds more expensive, a few dollars. It's still so much better than the really cheap one. So much nicer to use. So I'm just gonna add some more water so it spreads. Just so. I'm try to keep within the lines slightly. This needs a bit of yellow where I, I very rarely use white on its own ever on a painting because I like to, I like my whites to be warm so I always use a bit of add a bit of yellow to the white so it looks nice but that needs to dry a bit before it will look particularly good so I'm going to bring her face in a bit I think on this side and then slightly out a bit here So let's add the darker shades, just the sides, like this. Just so we get a sense of roundness. A human face isn't, it's not round really like this. It's kind of um, almost cone shaped, like this, the mouth will come out and then yeah, 
it's difficult to explain but um, if you look at the side of someone's head you'll be able to see so this is very roughly um, painted in because we'll need to do several layers before we build up the colour but because each layer needs to dry just as soon as you can try to get some paint down just whoops that's a bit that's a bit dark because the drying time can be quite considerable it's not a lot it depends on how warm and dry or the place you're painting in it is but you can spend a lot of time waiting for paint to dry basically while you're painting i spend i spent i think i spend maybe 20% of my time painting and 80% waiting for the paint to dry, thinking about the painting and looking at the painting. And apparently that's normal. I thought I was being particularly slow, but um, no, that's normal. You only really spend a small amount of time laying down paint. And the rest of the time you're sort of you're sort of, I guess it's procrastination, but it's not. It's actually, you're thinking about the painting, about how you want it to be, what you want it to look like, and you're looking at it. I always have it somewhere where I can look at it whilst it's, I'm thinking. And I'll just look at it and I'll see what needs to be changed. Maybe the colours need to be changed. Maybe a line just needs to go in, come in a bit or out a bit or something needs to go completely. Maybe you need to add something. It's all... I wonder if I should give her flesh-coloured legs. Let's do that just because I never give my girls flesh-coloured legs. They've always got a skirt on underneath their dress. But today I'm going to give flesh coloured legs because I think that looks nice actually it looks quite summery doesn't it with the sort of shortish dress okay so that bit can dry now I'll, I wonder what colour hair I'll give her I'm not sure but let's start doing the butterflies and I think I'm going to do the butterflies in a mixture of actually they can be bluey green so there's my blue there's my um my teal i'm going to use this green and i'm going to mix mix them together slightly because i don't like anything to be one color so we're just we're not doing any detail at the moment we're just blocking in color to cover up the white to start building up layers of color so yeah so let me just put a this is very opaque Oh, it's really nice. I've got another version of this which isn't opaque at all. It's very, very transparent. So add some of this green in just for a bit of variation. Oh, looks almost yellow in the middle. Can you see? I'll zoom in a bit. So it's all being done very roughly because the shape of this butterfly might change completely, I don't know. <laughs> it's not really much of a butterfly shape, it's just like two wings together. It's almost like one of those gorgeous, um, what are they called? Those amazing blue butterflies. I'll, I'll think of the name in a minute. That's a really lovely colour. Um, yeah, I'll do them all this, this colour. Wow, well, isn't it nice how colours interact with each other? Like those two colours, they just, ugh. I love experimenting with the sort of putting two colours together to see how they work together. And sort of you get, un you can use unexpected and un sort of 
a few colours that you wouldn't normally put together and just see and then it's always interesting. Sometimes it works, most of the time it works. Sometimes it doesn't, rarely. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Lovely, lovely, lovely butterflies. So let's do the same on here. So I'm using the teal around the outside, sort of very messily. I'll tidy these up only slightly, I think, because I quite like this messy look. Look at that gorgeous yellow. Oh, sorry, green. This is a uh, Liquitex heavy body. These are these are basically the first paints, acrylic paints I ever bought. I think it was five years ago. And they're so good, I'm still using them now. That's how good they are. I think, are they, um, they're professional quality, I didn't know. Um, they were quite cheap, they were at, we've got a shop here that sells artists supplies and they always have special offers on. They always have really good deals on every week and just in store, you have to go into the shop. So that's, I, can't, I don't think these that was more than twenty pounds for a set. I got a set of maybe must have been twelve, and they're professional grade. I didn't. No wonder they've lasted this long. I didn't know. I thought they were student grade. But. So the difference between the grades are the the more professional the grade, the more pigment you get and the, more, the higher quality the binders are and you won't get so much filler because the cheap paints have a lot of filler and then you can't really paint you can't you, they're probably good for doing large covering large surfaces but for something like this you, all you get was it would be a huge blob of paint that was mostly filler and very little pigment and it will just it'll just take ages to work it and I threw out all my all my cheap paint. I bought a, a few bits of cheap paint. There's only a couple of cheap paints that I still use and they're surprisingly good quality. The craft craft um grade paints but they're still good. I'll use some here just so you can see. Do it in a minute. I've only got two colours and they're skin tones, so don't know sort of love. I'm just gonna add, I'm just gonna make it use this the darkest shade I have. It may not stay this colour. I might give her light hair. Because I rarely do that, but I might give her a lightish coloured hair, but this can be the base, it's okay. I'll just be adding light highlights to this. It always needs to be darker around the edges and underneath, yeah, like that. See? Because this is wood, Make this add some yellow to this actually. I want this to be yellowy. So that's the beginnings of that. That will this will all be cleaned up and it will look much better. So for the, these flowers, I'm going to make them purpley, a kind of purple colour, but I'll just start with a base colour, so I can find it. So I'm going to start with this one. start with the 
these two. This is very light. This is a lovely. I just I just don't like the metal. This is metal and it's hard to it's hard to get the colours out. The paint out rather. So I don't need a lot. And this one's a bit darker. So there's two different types of purple or violet. Okay. So I'm going to I'll start with the lighter one and I'll just put it in as a base. dark one to just go over it slightly I'll build up lots of layers for this one so that it looks interesting so I think I want to make her bands this color as well it may not stay this color I might change it but it can start being this color because I really like it. It's such a cute pastel. It's pastel. I love pastel. I always use pastel shades on my whimsical girls. So a band can start this colour. Bring it down slightly, but I'll probably change it again. And Freddy, the little bird, Freddy needs a little bit of this colour as well. I usually do patches of colour for Freddy because she'll be pretty multicoloured with blues and pinks and a tiny bit of yellow. So I'll just patch colour, I'll get, make it a bit darker around. Whoops, that's too dark. Freddy is always pastel. <laughs> She's never this dark. But she can have a few dark bits on her. So yeah, I just so I just put patches of colour. I'll build it up. So I'm not sure what colour her dress will be. Let's have a think. Should we make it greeny coloured? Yellowy greeny or Let's start with yellowy greeny and then see how that goes. I think the yellow I want to use is going to be. I want to use this yellow, but only sparingly. stay this color let's see I just didn't I could have made it I was that there was a danger that it would be pink and I just thought oh I can't have too much pink in my painting although it would be lovely in pink maybe I'll do the top bit pink I'll do the hearts in pink how's that and this bit of the, the belt around the edges So I'm just blocking in the colour really roughly. It doesn't have to be neat. I'm just getting rid of the white really. Um, I'll make that a different colour. I'm not sure what colour it will be just yet. It might be that one of those colours. Oh, didn't put my yellow in. Okay, so it can be. That yellow is a bit too dark, I think. I need it to be more lemony yellow than this, which is quite orange. But it's still nice to have a variation of colour, regardless. I love that. So that 
it's done. So what I'll do now is I'm going to add some pink. I think I'll add magenta and I'll mix, where's my magenta? I'll just mix the magenta with, I'll just mix it on here. I want a specific pink. Actually, I could probably. I don't want it to be too dark. I want it to be like a baby pink. I might be able to just do this and get the colour. some in the flowers, in these flowers. This one's very dark, I didn't, it's a lot darker than the other one. And I also need to give Freddy some pink. To warm this picture up a bit, it's very um to me it seems quite cool. So I can add some like this. Oops, the middle is meant to be that colour. So because I've added this colour here, I'm going to have to add it somewhere else. So I'll have to think about it. Maybe her headband might become that this colour. Because right now this colour doesn't fit, to me, it doesn't fit with the rest of the painting. I just needed to add something warm because everywhere else is very cool. There are spots of warmth here. Obviously the dress has yellow in it as well. But I'm finding that it's got a very overall cool look to it. And I think sometimes I like to try to balance the colours so that it's not they're not too cool. 
So I'm, I'm trying to think where I can put this. Let's have a look to see how it looks in her hair, in her on her band, because then I can make her band a bit warmer in colour. Maybe I'll do that. I'll just put it here for now, just so I can I can see if it'll work. Add a tiny bit of yellow just to recreate the colour. Although it doesn't go so well. So magenta and yellow will make red. Okay. So maybe when I've filled in Freddy, then this area it will look a bit warmer. Freddy might have warmer colours. Let me just get a bit of bigger brush to do her headband. That's a bit better. Makes me happier. Slightly pastelize it by putting, adding in some of this and then blending it slightly. That looks better. It's a bit messy, but it will eventually. <laughs> So I need to add some green to the plants here. Yeah. But before I do that, I'm gonna add, start building up her face again. So I'll just use this, because this is dry now, so. Give Freddy a little bit of yellow because Freddy has yellow, blue, pink, and green in all pastel shades. So I just need to add a bit of white to that to make it pastel. Grab some green and do the plants at the bottom there. Do the leaves and the stem. So I'm just going to block that in really roughly because I'll be changing the colour. I'll be adding some depth, so I'll be using a, a darker green and some highlights. I just want to start blocking colour so I can check to see how the colours are working together because then I'll know if I need to change something and I am really liking this colour now up here. It looks really nice. So I'm going to add some more green to her dress. I think that's true. Let's 
give Freddy some green. Give Freddy her final. I think this will be her final colour. So I, she usually has a lot of blue in her, and it's always that baby blue. This is another one of my. Actually, I think I replaced this blue. So this didn't come with the original set, but I used so much blue that I bought another one. Okay, that looks nice. So because I need to wait for this paint to dry a bit. To give her some purple as well. Although because there's yellow on her, it, there's a danger that it might become brown. So I'm going to leave this dry so I'm not mixing in the colours too much as is happening over there. you get to this stage too and it's all looking great feel free to share your your paintings on the group which I'll link in the um, in the description below you can, you can we can all see what your lovely sweet girls you're making okay I'll speak to you soon see you bye